Okay, we are beginning part five, the conclusion of the hair coloring chapter. So we're gonna talk about highlighting shampoos. Um, highlighting shampoos are used for um, a slight change. When a slight change is, um, when a slight change in color is desired, um, very slight. <laughs> used when hair processes rapidly. So sometimes if a hair is a natural, lighter level, like an eight, nine, or 10, um, it might just um, process too fast for a lightener, so then you could use highlighting shampoos instead. Um, it's used to highlight natural color in a single application. Definitely will not work on artificially colored hair. Um, a patch test is required. Special, special challenges in hair color and corrective solutions. Um, Okay, so special challenges in hair color and corrective solutions. Um, gray, white, and salt and pepper hair all have characteristics that present unique coloring challenges. Yellowed hair, smoking, medication, sun exposure, and some styling aids. Um, I'm gonna go back to this really fast. Um, this is on page 701. Um, gray hair is caused by the reduction of pigment in the um, cortical layer, so the cortex. Uh, gray, white, and salt and pepper hair all have um, characteristics um, that present unique coloring challenges. For instance, gray hair can turn yellow if the lightener is used but not processed long enough. Um, a, great many, a great many salon coloring services, however, will successfully cover or enhance gray hair if performed correctly. So then we have, okay, so now we're talking about yellow hair. Yellow hair can be caused, um, can turn yellow from smoking, medication, sun exposure, or some styling aids. Um, so a problem that can occur with gray hair is it can develop a yellow cast, which can be caused by any of these um, factors. Um, lightener and hair color removers help remove yellow discoloration. Undesired yellow can often be overpowered by the artificial pigments deposited by violet-based colors of an equal or darker darker level than the yellow. So what that's saying is if the hair is yellow from any of these reasons, it's really easy to get rid of with just using um, a toner um, or a color with a violet base. <clears throat> So formulating for gray hair. So gray hair is a little different, it's a little tricky um, because it's very resistant. Level eight or lighter may not give complete coverage. Um, for me, it will if I use a higher developer. So if they want a lighter color, it can cover gray as long as you use a, a maybe a 30 volume. And if they want really super blonde, you could use, you could use 40. You can also use bleach totally use bleach on um, gray hair. It turns out beautiful. Level seven or darker can be used to create pastel and blonde tones on gray hair. For 80 to 100% natural gray, blonde is more flattering than darker tones. And I agree because not only is it more flattering because it's like closer to their natural color that it's turned, um, but also because if they have dark artificially colored hair and they have 80 to 100% of that white gray hair that's coming in, um, you're gonna see a line of demarcation, meaning regrowth of the gray hair so fast with the darker color. It really blends better with the lighter colors. Um, when coloring salt and pepper to darker color on color will make a darker shade. So here is, um, a nice little table for formulating gray hairs. So it will tell you the percentage of gray hair and if semi-permanent, demi-permanent, or permanent color is best. Other considerations when formulating for gray hair, client personality, personal preferences, and the amount and location of gray hair. Tips for achieving uh, gray coverage Use 20 volume developer or higher. Um, process color for a full 45 minutes, always. Um, add neutral to formula. So add something with an N or a neutral. Um, if 25% gray, use 25% neutral. If 50% gray, use 50% neutral. 
If 75% gray, use 75% neutral. Um, gold covers gray well, ash doesn't. So pre-softening, um, apply pre-softener to resistant area, process for 15 minutes, refer to manufacturer's directions, blot pre-softener off with a towel, and apply the, the final color formula. Process it according to instructions. So I'm gonna um, talk a little bit about what pre-softening is. And this is for very, very resistant hair. So occasionally gray hair is so resistant that even when formulation, application, and time are correct, you'll find that the coverage is not satisfactory. In such cases, pre-softening becomes necessary. Pre-softening is a process of treating gray or very resistant hair to allow for better penetration of color. Pre-softening raises the cuticle layer of the resistant hair to allow for better penetration of color. A pre-softener acts like a stain to the hair. If um, it is applied, processed, and removed, then the hair color is applied. Once the resistant hair has been pre-softened, um, as it says here, blot the pre-softener color off the towel and apply the final color. So rules for effective color correction. Okay, so color correction is when someone's color does not turn out good or as expected. Um, this can seem disastrous for your client or for you if you're the one that did it, but um, it doesn't need to be. Problems can always be corrected. So keep the following in mind. Do not panic. Determine the true problem. Determine the cause of the problem. Develop a solution. Take one step at a time, never guarantee results, and always strand test for accuracy. So if you strand test first, usually this isn't going to happen. You're not going to have to do a color correction. But if you can't or the client won't or you don't have time to uh, strand test, then sometimes color corrections can happen. And the thing that's nice about color is color can always be corrected. Hair cutting can't. Once it's gone, it's gone but hair coloring can be, okay? And also you need to be honest. This is one of those times that honesty is, um, honesty is always the best policy, but this is a great example of it. So damaged hair. So characteristics of damaged hair is it feels rough. It has a rough texture. It's over porous. Um, it's brittle and dry to the touch, suspect, susceptible to breakage no elasticity, spongy and matted when wet, feels like a sponge, color um, fades or absorbs too rapidly. Damage hair treatments, you can use penetra penetrating conditioner, normalize pH with finishing rinse, postpone further chemical services, tell them they need to wait a little while, um, perform between service conditioning, recommend retail products for home maintenance. I'm gonna go back to that and cut the hair. Fillers, um, conditioner fillers are used to recondition damaged, overly porous hair. Color fill fillers are used to equalize porosity and deposit color in one application. So um, if somebody has really damaged blonde hair and it's really overly porous and they want red, well, mm, if you put red color, even if it's permanent, directly over extremely porous, you know, white blonde hair, it's going to, if you're lucky, turn pink um, or maybe a light orange. But what's better to do is fill that hair. Well, first, the best thing to do is talk to them and tell them that this is honestly going to be a problem. But if they insist, you're going to fill the hair with an orange um, filler and that gets the hair kind of stained and um and it fills in those cuticles that are wide open and then you can put the desired um color on top of that the red or whatever they want um color fillers deposit color to faded ends help hair hold color prevents streaking and dull um sorry, and dull appearance, prevents off color results, produces a more uniform color, and it pr uh, produces more uniform color when coloring hair back to its natural color. 
selecting um, correct color filler. So you're gonna select to replace the missing primary color. So a, a filler is gonna be a primary color that's missing. Um, so it could be a red, a blue, or a yellow. Um, apply directly to hair or mix with hair color and apply to damaged ends. Hair color tips for redheads. Um, use red-orange base to create warm, coppery reds. Um, you're going to use red-violet for hot, fiery reds. Use no-lift, deposit-only color to refresh. If gray is present, add one half to one ounce of a natural color. Refresh with a soap cap to brighten the color. And in the book, it has, um, I don't remember what page it was, but it talks about soap caps. Okay. Um, let's see if I can see it real fast. Soap caps. Um, okay. I don't see it, but when you read the chapter, you'll see it. So hair color tips for brunettes. Use cool blue base to avoid brassy tones. Do not lighten more than two levels above the natural color to avoid brassy tones. Add one ounce of natural cover, uh, sorry, color to cover gray. Natural highlights should be deep or caramel in color, not too light. Hair color tips for blondes. Watch out for underlying unwanted warm tones when lightening from brown to blonde. Use level seven or darker to cover gray. Get light pale blonde by double processing. If using high lift blondes to only five levels, results may be warm or brassy. If highlights become too blonde, add low lights for more natural color. Common hair color solutions, refresh faded color, apply a demi-permanent hair color with two levels of formula and process for up to 10 minutes. A green cast, um, remove buildup and use color to neutralize unwanted color. Overall color is too light. You're going to apply a no lift deposit only color that is um, one to two levels darker. If the overall color is too dark, apply a hair color remover for 10 minutes and then check it. And these tips start on page 706. So restoring blonde to its natural color, um, if level six soften new growth with a level six violet base and 20 volume developer, process for 20 minutes. If level seven soften new growth with level eight light blonde violet base and 20 volume developer and process for 20 minutes. Um, continuing on with restoring blonde to natural hair color, Apply a no lift deposit only glaze with one ounce level eight light neutral blonde and one ounce level nine very light blonde red orange base. Process 20 minutes. Do not apply to new growth. Mix a no lift deposit only glaze with one and a half level six dark neutral blonde and one half ounce level four light brown gold base. And when you read the book, it's going to tell you why to do these things. If level eight light violet blonde at the base, you're going to use one and a half ounces level eight light neutral blonde with one half ounce level six dark golden blonde. Apply the chosen formula starting where the most, where the blonde is the most over lightened, where it's the blondest. Work through all the hair. Process up to 20 minutes, checking every five minutes, and then reevaluate. So, know the hair coloring safety precautions. You're going to always want to administer a patch test. Do not apply if abrasions are present. Do not apply if metallic or compound tint is present or has been present. Do not brush hair prior to service because you don't want to stretch the hair and you don't want to um, irritate the scalp. Read and follow all manufacturer's directions. Use disinfected applicators and tools. You're gonna to disinfect after every client. Drape properly, perform a strand test. Use glass or plastic bowl or plastic bottle. Remember, never use a metal bowl. Do not mix hair color until you are ready to use it because once the, it oxidizes from the air, it starts working. And it only has a shelf life of so long once it's been mixed. 
Um, wear protective gloves. Do not let the color get in the eyes of the client or in your eyes. Do not overlap product during retouch. Use mild acid balanced shampoo. Always wash hands before and after serving each client. And also with the mild acid balanced shampoo, make sure that you tell them what to use at home so it doesn't fade the color that you just worked on. Okay, so a summary and review. Hair coloring offers you the opportunity to exercise your creative talents and bring great pleasure to your clients. Enjoy your work, but most of all, enjoy and appreciate learning now and in the future. Hair color techniques, fashions, and formulations are constantly changing, and yes, that is so true. Professionals who specialize in hair color must constantly learn new techniques to keep up with those changes. And this concludes our chapter. Thank you.